Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and welcome to the DGA Awards for 2021. I am your host, Vince, and with me is my co-host... Ida Lee! Ida Lee! Awesome. So, today we'll be featuring our top 10 video games for 2021 that we absolutely love playing, regardless of release dates. Uh, I played so many video games this year, and it was really tough for me to really nail down a list. Um, but these are ones that I've played a lot of and would love to go back to um, as soon as possible. So I tried to make a decent list here, but I'm fortunately have to leave some of those games out. Um, so let's just jump right into it, shall we? Um, so let's go ahead and click some buttons, and there we go. So my number 10 was Pulsar Lost Colony. Yes, this game is a bit janky. It's buggy, and sometimes it's difficult to figure out what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. That being said, if you take the time to learn the ins and outs of this game, it's a really cool captain-your-own-vessel simulator where you can go around and interact with the galaxy in various ways. You do missions, you can do combat... In one playthrough, I felt like I was the captain of the Enterprise, kind of, sort of. My ship was the USS Intrepid. It's one of your starter ships. Um, and you just go around doing missions. Um, and then in my next playthrough, I was in a cloaked vessel with my friends. And we would sneak up to them and siphon credits from them using our, our sneaky ship's computer systems. And um, it was just fun. We were rich beyond our wildest dreams. But um, our ship wasn't as strong as some of the other ships out there. I felt more like a, a sleek Romulan vessel. Um, no Star Trek stuff in this game, obviously. But um, still, that's what I felt like. I felt like I was sneaking around with a cloaking device, a Romulan ship anyway. Um, so this game is pretty involved. Um, you can have um, up to, I think, four friends with you. Or you can have bots help you out. Um, you can program said bots, but it's a lot more fun with friends. There's like an engineer, a security officer, pilot, uh, engineer, and captain, I think. And each has different roles. You can also level up a skill tree and uh, make your make your skills more powerful. So yeah, uh, what did you think about this one? I love this game. Um, I thought it was really complicated at first, and I was a bit overwhelmed and... Uh, like my brain was going crazy in like the tutorials and stuff mm -hmm. but as you get a handle on it it's very much like Star Trek Bridge Crew but a much more advanced and open worldy uh, type of game and it's not as pretty but the gameplay f by far makes up for that mm -hmm. I agree um, mm -hmm. you mentioned Star Trek Bridge Crew and Star Trek Bridge Crew like you're stuck in specific chairs, like captain's chair or the pilot or whatever, weapons. In this game, mm -hmm. you can freely walk around your ship. You can even beam down the planets and do missions. Yeah, the, the combat in this game isn't the greatest. The graphics aren't the greatest. Um, but it's still, I think, like you said, a step up miles uh, from mm -hmm. Star Trek Bridge Crew. Not as pretty as Star Trek Bridge Crew, but you can do a lot more. Yeah. Um, so. The amount of ships you can have is really awesome. And the different uh, ways to actually play the game depending on the ship um, is crazy too. Because you can have like just a delivery ship um, of biscuits, you know. Is that what or you did? You had you had the faction <laughs> where your sole goal was just to deliver biscuits to everybody? Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> you like that? It wasn't boring at all? No, it was actually a lot of fun because there's like a competition, like you have to sell the most biscuits and then you get like one of those end game um, artifacts or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one where um, there's like this really cool futuristic looking ship um, that had natural cloak in it. Mm -hmm. That was really awesome. And it was fast. It was so fast. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the combat in this game was, again, it's, it's satisfying but janky. Like, you could control the turrets and shoot stuff. 
Um, mm -hmm. Again, or you can have your bots do it for you or your, your teammates do it for you. But all of it came to de together pretty well. The hardest part for me was learning like how the engineering station worked and uh, distributing power to different things. Like and I, I, at the beginning of our one playthrough with our friends, our cloaking device would go offline consistently and I couldn't figure out why. I eventually learned that, you know, if you don't have enough power getting to the cloaking device, it would just shut off automatically. So yeah. um, I had to learn how to prioritize power and make sure that the cloaking device was always getting power no matter what mode we were in or what we were doing. It was it, it was a challenge to, to learn. So this game can be fairly deep, but the bots can see you through most of the way if you don't have a cloak ship. The cloak <laughs> ship takes a little bit more AI fine-tuning, I think. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, I could go on forever about Pulsar mm -hmm. Lost Colony, but yeah, it's it's like Star Trek Bridge Crew, but much better. So mm -hmm. I would recommend taking a look at this, even if you plan to play it solo, um, if you like space exploration or dreamed of captaining your own starship and doing stuff. It's not the greatest in terms of graphics, but it's, it's not bad. Um, it's old school and it's pretty immersive, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I do not have any video of your number 10, which okay. was the Banner Saga 2, correct? Mm -hmm. So just tell me about it. I don't even, I have not touched this in years. I don't even remember oh. what it is. So what is it exactly? It's a um, story-driven, turn-based uh, tactical strategy game. Um, you can, it, it kind of reminds me of um, Dead in Vinland, kind of. Um, graphic wise and mm -hmm. like you have a base too and you can put resources in it and um it's it's such a nice story and it's it's so immersive and you feel as if you're in there the atmosphere is just amazing and you have to like kind of travel with all these characters and you have to make some really tough decisions mm -hmm. um and you have to get from one place to another um with um all these combat um, things that you have to do because you have um enemies chasing you mm -hmm. and it's just it's a really fun and heartfelt story with some ter really brutal hard brutally hard tactic combat turn-based combat <laughs> turn-based combat tur okay gotcha <laughs> fair enough um cool but it's really fun uh i'm not too fond of the characters to be honest except for like maybe a couple of them here and there mm -hmm. but the banner saga 2 is the only one i played i know that it's a continuation from the first one which i've never played okay and so it's kind of um it's actually kind of spoilery i don't mind spoilers well, don't uh, spoil it, but... I'm not, I'm not spoiling it, but it it continues from the ending of the Banner Saga 1, which is actually a spoiler in itself. Okay. So, yeah. Do you need to have played the first one to play the second one? No, but it will definitely ruin the story. Okay. Like, it will ruin uh, the, the ending of the first one, I think. Okay, good Good to know. <laughs> yeah. But you like it because of the story or because of the turn-based combat? Or what do you like about I, it? I like the story. The story is really like, oh my gosh. Like, like you don't expect some of the things that happen in there. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty intriguing. And while I don't really like the characters themselves, I still want to know more about the characters and what they're going to end up doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it has a grasp on you you know and it makes you want to keep playing the only thing i don't like is just the really hard i'm not good with tactical turn-based strategy you know in the first place and this one is actually kind of brutally hard but it's pretty satisfying when you do win, so. okay cool mm -hmm. all right well um with that said i guess we'll move on to number nine <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see um, my number nine was Heroes of the Storm. Mm. Um, I don't play this as much as I want to, but that's because I typically get burned out after three or four plays. Like, I'm one of those people, I cannot focus on any one game for longer than three or four hours, especially if, um, I've got other games to review or cover that are in the back of my head that are nagging me, or, um, if it's re repetitive. Um, MOBAs are repetitive. 
you start with level one, you, you enter a match as level one, you get up to whatever level it is, and then you end the match, and then you start a new one. Now you're back at level one again. There is mm-hmm. persistent growth in Heroes of the Storm, but not in terms of character development. It's more like profile level, character level, which is more for fluff than anything else, and skins, mm-hmm. of course. But um, yeah, I mean... That being said, Heroes of the Storm, I think, is um, one of the best MOBAs out there. It's the most user-friendly and gameplay-friendly. Uh, League of Legends has that stupid last hit thing where the person that gets the last hit gets the gets the kill or the gold or whatever. Everything in this game is shared in terms of, you know, gold or XP gain, so... Uh, you know, everything that you do is assisting your team no matter what it is, whether it's healing or supporting your team with Abathur from afar, whatever. It's just, and, and the, uh, Blizzard characters themselves are very well done. They're pretty balanced in my opinion. Um, even you'd think, uh, was this, it was it uh, dragon wing or what's, who's the, who's the large dragon? Deathwing. Now? Deathwing. Thank you. From <laughs> Warcraft. Like you'd think him would be overpowered. He, can be at times, but uh, you know he can still go down pretty quickly if if you know how to handle him. So like the balance in this game is pretty well done. Um, some characters are favored more so than others, but yeah, overall like this game is uh, a joy to play and it's very easy to get into. It's friendly. I like the co-op with friends feature. Um, what about you? Your profile level far exceeds mine. Um, nah, only by, what, 800 levels? 800 levels, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, yeah. grinding levels in this game takes a while. So yes, you've does. got, you've got like, quadruple the hours I've got at, at the very least. Um, you're, yeah. in a, you're also an ARAM player. Like, you do PvP, yeah. so you gain experience faster than I do. It's, it's very, very casual PvP. If there was any PvP that was casual, this would be it. Mm. So... You still run into toxic players from time to time. Sometimes. It's so easy to mute them and just keep playing. And sometimes you'll even get defended uh, by other players because everyone knows that you is not to really be taken seriously. It's just a game to have fun with other players. And if you lose, you lose. So let's go. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> I understand. All right, quick cut. Sorry about that. We had to fix some microphone issues. I don't know if it will be fixed or not, but we're hoping. Yeah, Ida Lee's voice just kept cutting out there. But long story short, um, she was an ARAM player, and she was saying that this is a very casual PvP. And Mm -hmm. as you were saying, you know, players can play how they like. You can mute them. Um, And what else did you say? I said... And just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. All right, so I said <laughs> you're sleeping that... on the couch. But okay. Oh, no, this one. <laughs> yes, that one right behind you. No, I said that um, PvP is you know pretty casual and it's what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun. Um, that you still run into toxic issues, but you even get people uh, defending your defending you because no one really takes Aram very seriously, e- either in League or Heroes of the Storm. So, okay. so you do have you some know. casual PvPers in there. Yeah, right. If they you... recognize the fact that this is just a game and not a lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I feel like the majority of ARAM players know this. You know, if someone's if someone loses, that's fine. Someone's got to lose. You know, so okay, well, it's that's okay. Fair enough. Um, what was your number nine? My number nine is something that we played pretty recently. I think it's Phantasma. Phantasma. Um, what prompted you to put this on this list? As buggy as it is, I know. Um, this is still a very much work in progress kind of game. Um, yes, it so, is. But why do you what what appeals to you that much? I really liked playing this game because I don't know. It's the puzzles. It's the trying to get out. You know, with with the puzzles that they give you, and mm-hmm. it, there is def- a definite creep factor in there, in the sense that there's no music. There's really not. Uh, many ambient sounds there it's just silence um or the ghost sound which is pretty cool because when i played phasmophobia i loved that there wasn't that that much music and i didn't mind the the was it the underwater sound when you enter the house Mm -hmm. this one doesn't really have any sounds and that's kind of frightening Mm -hmm. like 
I don't know. I just I found it really really fun. Even and I the think ghosts, the do- the, some of the ghosts don't even emit any sound, so it's creepy. Yeah, I think this deserves a spot because um, it's not really about investigating which ghost. It's just about getting the heck out of Dodge, mm-hmm. you know, yes. <laughs> with the puzzles. Mm-hmm. So for those of you that have never heard of Phantasma, it's not like Phasmophobia or Ghost Hunters Corp where you're investigating and then uh in the ca- in the case of ghost sensors core you're not exercising in this game you go into a house you summon the ghost and now you're trapped in the house and you've got to find four keys and get out and the ghost is constantly roaming the house trying to kill you um those that are in the truck can stay in the truck and help you out but once they enter the house to help you they're stuck in there too your ultimate mm-hmm. goal find four keys get out Um, the trick is there are boxes scattered all around the house. Some can only be opened by certain colored key cards. Others are puzzle based where there's a battleship or a maze, um, Morse code, and you have to do these puzzles and open these boxes to try and get the key. And all the while, like I said, it could be one of five different ghosts trying to hunt you down. There's like a doppelganger, a banshee, I think, uh, myling and, and so on a wraith, you know, is there a wraith? I think there's gin. Gin. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I haven't seen the gin yet. But mm-hmm. but anyway. So yeah. I mean, it's it's not a bad game. But like I said, it is pretty janky right now. But the mm-hmm. developers seem to be actively patching it. Uh, and yeah. there's only one map, but I, I hope to see more at some point. Yeah. Sure. There's there's times where it is pretty game breaking, where it just it'll just completely crash. Mm-hmm. But when it does work, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So cool. Um, number eight is a game that I spent... I, I kind of broke my rule sometimes and when I say that I've, I only spend a couple of hours playing any one game. AI War 2 is a game that I could sit there and play for five, six hours sometimes and get lost in it. Um, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's an RTS to some degree. It's like top-down and, and um, you know the, the game is broken up over different planets or whatever. But unlike an RTS, like typical RTS, where you start off with just a base and, you know, you build a factory that can pump out ships. In this game, like, it's you versus the AI, but the AI is everywhere and you start, like, smack dab in one spot. And it's your job to figure out which planets you want to take over for their benefits. Because the more planets you take over, the stronger the AI response becomes. So it's not, it's not like in a standard RTS game where you could build a bunch of units like Zergs, for example, and, and, and just Zerg rush your opponent to death in the first five minutes. You can't do that here. You have to think about your choices. You have to think about what planets you want to go after. Oh, there's this, there's this factory I can get if I capture this planet. Oh, there's a special capital ship I can get if I capture this planet. Um, and this game has so many different factions that you can include in this. Like, you can have more. It's just, even though it's you versus the AI, you can add other side factions to this to either help you or hinder you, depending on what, you, what kind of game you want. Um, it's fantastic, truly. It's not the most graphically beautiful game you'll ever see, especially when you zoom in on the ships themselves. You will see them shooting and stuff, but um, it's not like, you know, it's not like modern day RTS games that look very beautiful. Um, this one is very much more of a spreadsheet thing where if you hover over something, you'll see paragraphs of tooltips, and that can take you a long time. This is This game definitely has a learning curve to it. Um, but I enjoy this one. What do you think of AI War 2, hun? The learning curve is what really put me off in this game. I, you um, had a hard time with it going in. I did. I really did. Do the you still dislike it? Or I do I do not dislike it. I actually really, really enjoy this one when I can find the time and actually like wrap my head around it. And every time I start the game, I have to relearn it. And that's really annoying. She asks but... me the same questions every time we play. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, do. I, I really do want to take the time and really learn it, like memorize it and stuff. But that's the whole thing. Like, I don't want to really memorize what is good against what. And that's that's hard to do for someone who doesn't have 
a lot of time, you know, I, with all their games. Pr- I mean, have. look at me, okay? Uh, how much time do I have? <laughs> I know, Zero. That's... Full-time job, many games to cover and review. I understand. Yeah. But uh, you took the time. You took the time to actually learn this game. I learned it. I don't know what ships are good against what. What I do <laughs> is I build um, a variety of different ships, and mm-hmm. I upgrade um, whatever ships I have the most of. I will okay. upgrade those to become more powerful with my research. Mm. Um, if I have a lot of small ships, I'll research the small ship part. Or, you know, if I like to use turrets, then I'll just upgrade my turrets or what have you. Um, mm-hmm. But there were a lot of things, like even like 8 to 10 hours in, there was tutorial stuff that I didn't even know about because I didn't, mm-hmm. uh, that I was like, oh, I didn't know I could do this. Uh, you know, I didn't know I could upgrade my fleet. I didn't know I could do that. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't. I, I had no idea. So there's there's a lot of uh, hidden stuff in this game that, unless you're actively reading all of these different paragraphs and understanding how things, it's going to take you a while. That yeah. being said, it this will give you many, 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 many hours of enjoyment if you take the time to learn it. I I do like the game. I love that you can make like this huge fleet and go jump from ship to ship and take things over or just skip if you really want to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that the AI actually gets um, stronger. What was it? The longer the game goes on or it's something? The more, see, there's something called like, um, I don't remember. I, I haven't played this in a couple of months, but um, mm-hmm. a, there's an AI uh, uh, threat level. Okay. okay. The more plan that the actions that you take in this game will increase that threat. If you take over a planet, up AI threat goes up. If you attack a particular structure that the AI really like values as important, that will up your your AI threat. When your AI threat reaches a certain threshold, it will start sending more reinforcements after you and consistently attack you. Um, yeah. There are structures, however, that you can destroy to help you lower that threat. So again, like some of the strategy in this game is, okay, my AI threat right now is 20. I'm going to go over here, capture this planet, that'll increase the threat. But then I'm going to jump over to this planet over here, destroy this structure that'll lower my threat by another 15. Now I'm going to hack this. Now I'm going to go ahead and come over here. So there's like, you're chaining certain strategies so that you can keep the AI threat level low and more manageable. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting mechanic. Um, it's not, it's not a game where you and your opponent are on even footing. This is a game where it's an uphill battle. And at some point you reach a point where you're able to then take on the AI boss, whatever he's called and try and take him out. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, this is a really cool game. Albeit tough to learn. Um, yep, what, I agree. What was your number uh, eight? eight? Escape Simulator. You really <laughs> like this one. You ask me to play it almost every day, even though there's only five. There's what, 15, eight, 17 levels, something like that right now. Plus mm-hmm. community rooms. What I have not tried those yet. What mm-hmm. what what brings you to, to Escape Simulator? Oh my gosh, I love puzzles. And I love escape room games. And this was so cute and albeit it is a little small like it's pretty cramped yeah the rooms are small (laughs) they're so small but um i do like this game and i really do like playing it with you because it's kind of fun to you know teamwork stuff and it's it's cute and it's adorable it's like a date date night type of game yeah (laughs) and the game tasks you with completing these rooms in like 15 minutes um, I think one out of four do we ever complete it in 15 minutes. Um, but you can okay. always replay levels and and get that achievement if you really, really want it. But typically, mm-hmm. you're thrown into this small room. It's best with like two to three people, ideally. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are typically tasked with just, like she said, completing a series of puzzles in a particular order in order to escape the room somehow. Like the one level that we did recently... There was a space suit in there. We first had to open the door to access it, but we also had to repair the airlock so that we can actually leave. 
Um, so we had to repair the suit and get the door powered to leave. And there were the different fuses with different numbers on them. So we had to figure out which fuses go where. There was a, a sheet that told us the value of each of the systems. So we had to add up like, okay, this fuse and this fuse adds up to this. So we need to put this in here to power this system and so on. Um, it was it was really cool. Um, so there's like sci-fi, there's Egyptian, there's uh, Victor- Victorian, is it? And then the new Omega is like an office like the new mega levels are like an office setting. And then there is community levels too, I'm sure, but I've not checked those out yet. The puzzles are really thinky. Sometimes they're really tricky too. Like they'll get you, man. <laughs> yeah. Um there are times where we were sitting there for the worst one was the chemistry, the lab. That was that was awful. Mm. I couldn't for whatever reason there was a desync issue where what you were looking at and what I was looking at were different. Um hopefully yeah. they fix that. But um yeah, we were on that level for like half an hour. Yeah, I got the first part of it um, pretty quickly because I like stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I think that um, you struggled a little bit because I, um, I really wanted to do it. But I was like, okay, no, I'll let him do it. Let him learn. <laughs> so you're sitting there <laughs> laughing at me the entire time, face palming. I get it. No, but I'm sure you were face palming with other things, too, that I was trying to figure out. So I like that it like you could... This game kind of plays on your strengths and weaknesses, and that's why it's kind of good to play multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, um, with that said, I guess we will move on to our number seven. Yep. All right. My number seven was Oxygen Not Included. I am not great at this game, but I love it. Um, I cannot tell you how many hours I have in this game, but... It's like Don't Starve. In fact, it's by the same company, Cly Entertainment. Clee, Cly, whatever. Um, <laughs> where Cly, Clee, Cly Entertainment, whatever, often makes games that are pretty deep. Oxygen Not Included is probably one of the deepest games I've ever played. It's not only a, a game where you have to build an underground base, uh, but you're managing oxygen. But not only that, there's carbon dioxide, hydrogen, uh, methane, um, and these gases have weight to them. So your carbon dioxide is going to fall down. Your hydrogen is going to rise above everything else. Um, you've got liquids that you have to pump. There's germs, and your 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 duplicants, as they're called, will get sick if they drink dirty water. So you have to sort of build various things that will um, you know, clean your water systems. You've got power requirements. You start them off running on a hamster wheel, but then you get coal. Um, and then you can eventually get like solar, which is if you dig to the surface kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of other ones. There's vents that you find in the environment in the different biomes that will steadily produce a certain thing, whether it be water or gas or what have you. This is a very deep game. And this is a game you're going to have to play repeatedly until you get it just right. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have anything to say about Oxygen Not Included? Did you play this even? Or did you just watch I me play? I have. No, I have played it. And I got so frustrated. Yes. <laughs> um, like you said, it is deep. I actually love the game. I really do. I would totally play this again. And this has a steep learning curve um, in the sense that you kind of have to wiki a lot of the stuff, I think. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. I really like it. It's very Factorio-ish. Um, I thought, I remember the first time I played played it, I thought it was going to be like Fallout Shelter or something like that because of, um, how the rooms looked. Nope. Oh my gosh, it was nothing like it. <laughs> no. Um, there are rooms, like in Fallout Shelter, you're building predetermined rooms. In this game, <laughs> it's freeform. You put whatever you want anywhere. Okay, mm-hmm. but you have to, again, worry about ventilation and, and water, liquids, keeping mm-hmm. your duplicates fed in some way, um, managing temperature. Temperature becomes a problem mid-game where if you're surrounded by heat or surrounded by cold biome, this stuff will seep into your your main area and kill off your duplicates mm-hmm. uh, because there are different biomes. Uh, the further down you go, the hotter it gets, for example. So you may have to go to a different like ice cold biome and you can run pipe through the ice biome. And what I this is how I cool my water. I've made air conditioning this way. I have a, a vat of warm water from wherever. 
I pump it out through a pipe and that pipe runs through my cold biome and then it comes back um, into a different tank that is a bit cooler and it's just it's a vat to hold cooler water um, and while it so like the cool air is actually you know touching the pipes and cooling the water within it so I start with warm water end up with cold water and not only that but the pipes are emitting this cool uh, the cool air so any any duplicates that are working around these pipes will be greeted with cool air. Um, so there's multiple ways to treat uh, certain aspects of this game, and it's it's really cool the designs that people have come up with for this. Um, my designs are nearly nothing as good as some others, but um, it's I've fun. It's fun to mess I, around with. I've never even gotten that far. Like, I just, I made characters, and I would build beds, and then they would starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the game that you played is Food Not Included. Okay. Basically. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. But it was, it, like, I think, I don't know, I feel like I did kind of get far, but I don't remember because Factorio took over my life mm -hmm. at that point. <laughs> so That's understandable. Yeah. There's no eating in Factorio, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it is a good game. I definitely agree with everything you've said. Mm -hmm. Um, moving on to your number seven. Aliens Fire Team Elite. <laughs> uh huh. Agree with this one. It's on my list too, so we'll just talk about it now and I'll mm -hmm. skip it when it comes to me. Um Aww. it's fine. So what did you like about Aliens Fire Team Elite? It's such a ca casual, mindless shoot 'em up with a different theme, which is aliens. And I love it. And I love the guns. The gun sound is pretty satisfying. Mm -hmm. Demolitioner OP. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just I just don't like how, without getting too political, I guess, I don't, I just don't like how it kind of um, shoves. Certain I'm characterisms yeah. at, in, in your face. Yeah, I'm a Hispanic girl, okay? And I'm all about Spanish pride. But when you have a game where the original movie didn't have as much uh, Spanishness, I guess, in there, and then you have this game who actually takes a lot of things from the original movies, but then you add like a ton of Hispanicness there, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> they don't even speak. They speak. Rodriguez is it, I think, in this game. She she's always like saying, oh. uh, I don't want to say the p word, but uh, it's Puma. It, it's sort of it's similar to Puma, but there's a t uh, in there. Oh yeah. She's yeah. saying Spanish slurs in there or swear wow. words, whatever. And it's I don't know, like it's it's okay. I, I ignore the dialogue in this game. Mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, the story I could care less. What I I love the dialogue because it did actually take from the original movies. And I don't mind. There was one Spanish girl in the original movies. And they did take some of her dialogue, which was awesome. But they do it way too much in the actual video game. Mm -hmm. Like, so much that it, it starts to stray away from the originals. And I, I did not like that. That was that hurt my, my little childhood heart. There's you know? fan service. <laughs> and then there's like, see, fan service. See, see, mm -hmm. fan service. See, see, fan service. That's that's. Si, si senor. Do, yeah, si senor. Yeah, all right. Uh, toys meal. Uh, uh, I liked this game because of the, the class system. Um, mm -hmm. There are multiple classes in this game. Uh, there's like, I forget, engineer, right? Who has a turret that you can put down. There's yes. a demolitioner. There's the gunner. There's the, the phalanx. phalanx. Um, and you level each of these classes up individually. And then as you do that, um, not only do you earn currencies to purchase new weapons, but you also have this Tetris-like grid where you're mm. putting perks into this grid and trying to fit them in in a certain way to complement the skills that each class has. Um, so I, I enjoy leveling up stuff. And that's why I continue to play this throughout this year. Now um, I'm kind of busy with other games and haven't touched this lately. Um, but uh, one thing I don't like is that by default, the harder modes are impossible to play with bots. Unless either you've got the mod or you're going to play with actual people. Um, I don't like how the developers of this game hard-locked 
certain content behind harder difficulties and then didn't allow the bots to help you through that. It forced you to play with other people to get some of that content. And I, I don't like that. I, I, if I want to play a game solo, if it says single player, I expect all the content to be unlocked via single player. Um, that's not to say I don't enjoy the game. Um, I, there is actually a mod that makes the AI better, but mm -hmm. um, I, there's like weekly challenges, there's daily challenges. Um, the levels do get a little repetitive. I think there's a total of 12 levels or so. There's even a, a holdout scenario where you're constantly um, bombarded with waves of enemies and you're just holding out in the same spot. Um, I, I'm waiting for them to release more content at this point. Mm -hmm. um, they have a season pass, of course, but they don't have a uh, they don't have like a, a a Trello board to tell you what's coming up. They don't yeah. have uh, a development. Oh, here's what's coming up, guys. Uh, in quarter one of 2022, we're, we're planning to release this. There's no outline of what's coming. So, but you've got a season pass for sale. Typical AAA BS, you know. So there are some things I don't approve of, but I yeah. I did enjoy what I played. Um, I know I'm knocking on the game pretty hard here, but I have several hours. No, was it 50 plus? Maybe even 100 plus at this point. Um, mm -hmm. I enjoy it. It, it's satisfying to play up to three players, not four. Uh, unlike yeah. Left 4 Dead, it's a total party size of three. So um, they did. Uh, I'm reading the updates now, and they did actually make some patches. Um, I did hear too that they were actually going to remove mods that made bots better. So that really, was kind of unfortunate. yeah. I'm sure people are pretty pissed about that. Yeah, and I'm sure people are actually okay with it because I have actually heard some players say that um, if you're not skilled, then you do not deserve the higher. Um, wow! So elitism, elitism, weapons. elitism. Okay. Yeah, that's it's, that's stupid. It's sad. Like in a way, I can understand just because, like, if you're not that skilled then how do you deserve the same types of prizes that really, really skilled players, you know, uh, get? I sort of understand that. But at I, the same time, I think it should be obtainable by people who don't mind to, to put in the time for a grind, you know? Right. I so. would say, like, make all of the equipment and weapons and everything accessible at every difficulty level but extreme will grant you two times the experience or whatever make it mm -hmm. so that it takes less of a grind on the harder modes compared yeah. to the easy modes you know what i mean um and here's the storm who we just talked about you can rank up your profile no matter what difficulty you play on with the bots it, yeah. you get more experience though playing against harder bots than you do easy mm -hmm. bots you know anyway mm -hmm. so i do i don't play this a lot lately but i uh, have i haven't played it lately but i have played it enough this year where it did make my list um mm -hmm. so i and i would still come back to it and play it because it's i love leveling up classes and i like the consumables that you earn and, and trying out different combinations of things mm -hmm. so i've leveled up everything and i still really like it like i would still play it just for that mindless shoot 'em up thing and the satisfaction of just killing aliens you know so mm -hmm. Fair mm -hmm. enough. All right, moving on to my number six, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Raft. Um, I I like Raft because of how open-worldy it is and how you have the freedom to do almost ev anything you want. Um, I like the resource grind in this game. I like making the nets that catch things. Basically, you're in this raft, you start small, and there are materials in the water, and you have to use a hook, reel them in, and then build your raft bigger. Eventually, you can build these nets that catch things automatically for you. You build a sail so you can actually change direction, um, or you can just have a paddle and manually paddle towards stuff. Um, you can build multiple floors. There's a forge where you can smelt ore. There's islands where you can tame animals, or not tame, but more like capture them with a net gun, bring them back, and then they start producing resources for you. Um, and then you can even decorate with beds and other cool things. Um, so uh, Raft, I've spent so many hours playing and it's just, it's, a, it's to me, this is a game that I can chill to 
just relax. Just just watch the waves and catch resources on occasion. The shark comes and tries to eat my boat and I stab it with a, with a spear or something. But um, it's it's a really cool grind. And I've, I don't know, I just, I really like this one. Uh, what are your thoughts about Raft? I like Raft. I do. But. But. I get very burned out in it. Pretty easily, I think. Is it because there's nothing to do, or like, what do? You, what is it? I don't. I I can't even pinpoint it. Um, I I like building the raft, but I think I set my ambitions like way too high. That I want like a second floor right away or a third floor right away. I want to get everything done. That by the time I'm like one percent of the way there, I get really tired and overwhelmed, and I just want to play something else. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I do like the game. I like the the crafting. I like the resource management, the resource collections. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it can get a bit boring. In all honesty. Well, yeah, um, that's a, a lot of it is waiting for resources to be collected mm-hmm. so that you can do something. Um, yeah. I like. I, I am always busy in this game. Uh, it's, if I'm not cooking, I'm going at an island and looking for resources, or I'm working on the next expansion to the boat. I'm always doing something in this. I'm, nev- I'm never bored. It, it feels repetitive to me, though. Mm. But that's just my opinion. I understand. I think, I think Stranded Deep did it a little bit better. I, I didn't like Stranded Deep because of the crafting system. Mm. They don't have... Um, they don't have a research table in in Stranded Deep, from what I've played, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, instead, you've got this... Uh, it's like the forest, where you've got this crafting mat, and you throw resources on it, and whatever... If you make the correct combination, you've made it. I don't like that. I don't like games where you have to discover things through experimentation. I use I, the wiki. <laughs> Again, but see that that breaks the immersion for me. That's I true. I want an in-game crafting thing where mm. it, it's it's right there and it tells you what you need. You know what I mean? I don't like hmm maybe three sticks will work. Oh nope, let's try four. Nope nope, let's try five. Nope stone maybe. Yep. Oh no nope, no. Nope. No, I'm not mm-mm. I'm not here to figure out what the developers had. You know, I guess yeah. the content. No no. I, don't, I understand I, that. Uh, whenever a game introduces something like that, I do usually just weak it. <laughs> I don't like. That's it a yet. failure in the developers. I mean, some. To be fair, some people like experimentation games where you have to figure it out. Where the game goes, you figure it out, and they're yeah. like, "I will watch me. I'm a. I'm. I'm the best <laughs> gamer ever. I'll figure it." No, I, I'm not that kind of person. I don't have the time, <laughs> nor do yeah. I have anything to prove to anyone. You know what I mean? So I don't like typically I don't like playing yeah. those kind of games. You know what I mean? That's understandable. I still think Stranded Deep is, um, I don't know. To me, I would spend more hours in Stranded Deep. Than Interesting. Raft, just just because mm-hmm. I feel it's less boring, I guess. But I have it's not fine. played it lately, so I don't know if it's any good. To be honest, mm-hmm. I remember playing it way back when, but whether or not it's improved. Nah. Mm. Um, so with that being said, let's move on to your entry for number six, which is what? It's a water-based, um, game too, though. It is. It's Mega Aquarium. Mega Aquarium. Um, (laughs) this is a, I just reviewed it recently. Top down. Uh, although you can first person it if you zoom in far enough. Um, Mm -hmm. where you manage fish, you manage an aquarium. Uh, what did you like about this one? Oh, it's so puzzly. It's super puzzly, and I think that's what really, like, um, part of the pun, it re- that's where it hooked me. <laughs> really? So in, in this game, you've got different fish that you have, right? Mm-hmm. And they've got different needs. This fish is might be classified as a wimp, okay? Mm-hmm. And they cannot be put in the same tank as bullies. Or yep. this fish might be a freshwater fish and can't be mixed in with this fish. Um, this fish might need a minimum um, school plants. size of three or four, or like you mm-hmm. said, plants or rocks Plant or caves. Um, so you have to put various items in the tank in order to appease them. Um, mm-hmm. Some fish can go together. Others can't be put together. It's up to you on how you want to approach that. 
Um, there's staff that you can level up or hire and level up. Um, you can put down like restrooms and vending machines, different things like that. But for the most part, money in this game is never a problem for me. I never run out. It's it's a very yeah. easy money making kind of game. It's it's more of a chill um, aquarium simulator. If I had to it's, label it, it's n it's not the like the store aspect, I guess, or the the business side. It's more of the puzzly side mm -hmm. that I find challenging. You know, the trying to get to cram fishes into um, one tank efficiently, you know, in a small space so that your um, customers don't have to go all the way around. Um, but I am so grateful that customers in this game are really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. And you can literally put arrows so that they can walk a certain path. You know, so that's kind of nice. <laughs> I never, I'm, not, I don't go that far with it. <laughs> My goal is throw crap down in a Borg-like manner and just yeah. make money in the process. My, yeah. my, my aquarium looks terrible. Tank after oh. tank after tank after tank. It's just, it's there to make money and and level up. Um, it, you're and like the same looking tank for the most like part. The yes, time. yes, yep. yeah. <laughs> On occasion, I'll throw a different tank in there just to make it look interesting. But yeah, okay. yeah, I, I it, yeah, like you said, it's it's like fifteen percent management, eighty five percent puzzle, figuring out which fish to put where and how to make them happy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was Mega Aquarium. It's an easy recommend for me. Um, oh, oh, and you have to yes. be really careful too. You, you kind of have to manage the fish because um, if they grow too big and um, if they breed too much, they can either eat the other smaller fish or they can eat um, their own fish or they can eat only the crustaceans. So there is a lot of like fish management too as they're growing up the longer they live. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry, that's all. No, you're to. fine. There's plenty more. <laughs> Check out my review if you're interested in learning more about mm -hmm. this game. Um, moving on to my number five. Uh, I would just quickly say Aliens Fire Team Elite. We've already talked about it. So nice. uh, with that being said, we'll move on to uh, your entry. <laughs> there you go. Five seconds of footage there. Um, all right. So what was your number five? Back for Blood. Back for Blood. That's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. This would have been on my list had it not been for the fact that the mm -hmm. price tag was a bit much, in my opinion. And uh, the history of the developers in question, Turtle Rock Studios, um, the developers of Evolve, which tanked because of microtransaction practices and whatnot. Um, I was afraid that this game might go the same route. And um, single player progress as of right now is like it's a sandbox mode where you have everything, but only in multiplayer do you see progression and you can actually yes. unlock stuff. I, I read in patch notes that they plan to change that, um, yes. which is good. This this December, I believe. Mm -hmm. What did you like about Back for Blood? Why did you add it to this list? I love the left. I've well, ever since you introduced me to Left for Dead, um, I really liked that game. But I hated that there was no permanent progression, and it kind of made me feel as if I was kind of wasting my time. To be honest, no, you know? it's fair. I. I would play Left 4 Dead 2 more often if there was some way to unlock stuff, but there's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Back 4 Blood kind of did that for me. Um, not in the single player mode, but like in whenever we played together or if I played with randoms. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit convoluted it, like in the UI menus. I don't like the UI, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of difficult to get around and kind of difficult to wrap my head around the campaigns that you're running versus the campaigns that other people are running um, and where you left off. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a turn off. But I love the gameplay itself. It's a lot of fun. It's actually really challenging sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I like the... Um, uh, how would you call it? Like the Chaos Waste in Vermintide 2? Um, that... Is, stage and like you can purchase things throughout the stage um like the holdout the holdout levels run. like the last stand levels or like no but just like you can go through different stages roguelite? and roguelites yeah sure rogues roguelike well roguelite, roguelite is permanent progression like permanent like every run gets you something new to give you a, a heads up for the next run a roguelike is 
you can level up during your run, but once you're dead, you're dead, and you start over from okay. scratch again. It's a, it's a slight difference there. But yeah, there's this game has uh, more of a rogue-like... Well, no, more roguelite, because um, you um, in multiplayer, you're unlocking cards. There's a card system. And um, during your run, there are enemy mutation cards that make your run worse. Um, mm-hmm. But there are also cards that make your run better, too. Um, and you're yeah. also building a deck as well. And some of these yeah. cards will appear in your run as well. So how did you feel about the card system? Did you Are you enjoying the process of I, unlocking cards? I, I really love the card system. I only wish you can change cards um, during the runs, and you can't do that. Yeah. Like, your deck is your soul deck for the rest of the whole thing until you get wiped out or whatever. Or until you start until a new you, run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, but I, I love to... The fact that anytime you start the mission, you have like a store and you can purchase mods. You can purchase um, team based um, extra health or extra inventory slots or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, I just wish that was con- continuous, you know, because doesn't all that go away after the run? Or Once something your run like is that? over, yeah, you start over from scratch again, but with the new cards that you've unlocked through your permanent progression. Yeah, yeah. Those so are fine. in theory, you will be stronger in your next run because your cards will be better. Yeah, I like that. I I want to keep playing to unlock all the cards. I can't wait for solo mode because um, I don't have to like rely on people. I guess. Yeah, I can same. Just play with the box, and I'm not available all the time to play. So you know, mm-hmm. there's that. But um, I like I like the game. It's the gunplay is actually really satisfying. It is. And it's smooth. Mm-hmm. The I feel that the special infected or whatever they're called um, yes. spawn way too much in this yes, game. Uh, like there's no like I feel like the balance is still a bit broken in mm-hmm. terms of yeah, like, it is. Um, like easy mode is OK, but the, they're not called special infected. And they're in fact, the heroes are called cleaners in this game. I, I don't remember what the zombies are called, but they're not zombies. There's something else. It's stupid. Um, yeah. But anyway. It's like the word zombie has been trademarked or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, uh, Back for Blood. Anything else to say about it? Um, no. No, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, number four. My number four was King of Retail. Um, this is a game that I've been playing off and on all year. Um, I think I'm on my third playthrough at this point. And I, I enjoy a simulator where I can manage my own business. Um... This game is still early access, and I feel that they could add more products to this game. Right now, you can buy like computer stuff, peripheral, or you can you can buy the stuff to put out for sale. There's like computer stuff, peripherals. Um, there's groceries like beverages, wine, beer, canned stuff, frozen stuff. There's clothing like shirts and pants, uh, but there could be room for a lot more. Like you, I would love a pet store. Or uh, maybe a a video game store like GameStop where I'm selling video games. Or um, maybe a health store where I'm selling various products, uh, health products. Uh, A pharmacy. I don't know. Just I would love to see different kinds of products uh, to to mess around with. But the idea of where you're your own person and you can manage a register, you can stock stuff. Deliveries come in. You can unpack stuff. You have to manage storage. You can do your own marketing if you want to. Um, but as your store grows, you need to hire staff to do your sales stuff uh, for you and, and other things. So I don't know. I just I enjoy the making money of, aspect of this game. And it's, it's fairly light to the point where I don't have trouble making too much money. But I get to play around with various ideas. But that being said, it can do a whole lot more than what it's doing, in my opinion. Um, yeah. What did you think of this one? I love this game. I really do. The only um, problems that I have with it are sometimes the controls. Um, the control scheme is really annoying sometimes, and I glitch a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it it does look really janky, and sometimes I get the stupidest glitches. Um, and the UI is clunky, and I don't really care about the customization because it's too confusing. And I know I'm really knocking this game, but I do No, love it's it. fair fair enough. Yeah. I mean I'm, like I'm, it is early access, like I said, so it is janky, I agree. Yeah. And there's no achievements to keep me playing because you know, there's no motivation there. I can't <laughs> no, roll my kidding. eyes any harder. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. S- campaign is awesome. I love franchise mode. That is so much fun. Really? The uh, fact that... Mm-hmm. But campaign mode is you go from store to store to store trying to appe- uh, appeal to a particular customer type, correct? At first, at first, you're like a little, you're like a little nobody and you go from store to store completing these little missions like sell, you know, serve five customers in this store, serve five customers in this store. And you have to make enough money to, to buy um, your whole, your own store in a region. And then you start your franchise there. You can select um, what you want to sell dependent on the type of people in that region and then when you make enough money there you can purchase another store and you can hire staff to um, automate your first store you know Mm. it's just it's so in depth and that was awesome like i remember um i had i had so many stores and I felt like an actual um, entrepreneur. <laughs> nice. It was really cool. <laughs> I have all of my time, which is many, many hours, has been spent in the one store sandbox mode where mm-hmm. you can you can buy more space for it and expand it as much as you want. I just mm-hmm. uh, that's the like I don't I don't I'm not going to bother with multiple stores when I can just I don't want to yeah. build the same store over and over and over again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the, um. What's cool about the franchise, too, is that there's, like, this whole building. There's this huge headquarters building that you have, and you can actually go in it, talk to people, ask questions. And then there's a huge headquarters screen where you can change the logos of each of your stores. You can change products. Like, it's a whole, like, headquarters thing. Or you can go on one of your stores and just, you know, work there, you Mm -hmm. know, for the time being if you want. So Interesting. it's, it's pretty cool. I, I recommend franchise mode for sure. Okay. I'll <laughs> give it a try at some point. I'm, t- I'm just having mm-hmm. too much fun in my sandbox mode, mm-hmm. my single store mode, but yeah, yeah, that was King of retail. Um, moving on to an entry. I was surprised to see on your end. Um, <laughs> yeah. no place like home. What, what brought you to this? Like it's, it's like, it's like a Stardew Valley Farmville, but you're cleaning trash. What, yeah. what do you like about this? Okay, first off, Back for Blood Zombies is named Ridden. I just found that Ridden. out. Ridden, okay. Ridden, Ridden, that's right. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so No Place Like Home. I liked how casual it was, and it made me want to clean trash. <laughs> it appealed to the, the janitor inside of me, The I train guess. station <laughs> renovation side of you. Is that it? Okay, yeah, that's better. <laughs> it's less degrading. <laughs> so... <laughs> I didn't say it. You did. <laughs> just saying. I just I don't know. It was cute. It's a it's about like what a girl who is cleaning um like her yard and her neighbor's yard and like this whole huge field. And I like the little puzzly aspects too, where you have to clean certain areas and unlock boxes and keys in order to get to the next area. Mm-hmm. And it's a real grind. Because you have to recycle the trash um, that recycles into something else in order to purchase your next upgraded um, buildings or whatever. And I think that's a lot of fun. And it's just, it's cute. And I like the chickens in there. They're the robots and they're all adorable. Mm -hmm. It's no Stardew Valley, but. No, no. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, it's interesting. It Um, is interesting. (laughs) It's a different, it's a different style of farming game than what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. the farming is pretty easy. Like, the whole game is really easy, but I like how relaxing the grind is. So, I'm surprised. I'm surprised this was on your list and not Big Farm Story because you've played that all the time. Big Farm Story can be so frustrating. It is so frustrating because, um,. The multiplayer is not real real multiplayer. Um, the controls are still kind of weird. Mm-hmm. It's it seems like a game that has a lot, but that does not have a lot. Gotcha. So, I can understand right? why it didn't make your. You have many hours in it. 
I do. And I still, I, just because I have a lot of hours in a game doesn't really mean that I love the game. It just means that I want to finish it to finish it. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> That's all. Just, it's a bad movie that you've got to keep watching just to get, get it done and over with. Yeah, I just want the end game content. Mm. I want to get all the money. I want to finish the game so I can finally uninstall it. <laughs> I, I find it stupid that in that game, Big Farm Story, mm. you have a resource called hummus. And you and and you run out of hummus to in order to help your your friends and and on their fields you you sprinkle hummus or whatever onto their crops, mm-hmm. but you can run out of hummus so you have to buy more hummus. It's stupid. Yeah. It really is. I m- helping other people in this game actually sets you back. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Well, they did actually update the game where you can now purchase everything with currency. You can buy hummus, you can buy the friendship tokens, you can buy the uh, recipe tokens, you can buy everything now with gold. So Okay, well at least, at least it's more that. accessible now, but still. Yes, very very much so. And and most farm games I've ever played, helping your neighbors was typically free. Yeah. Um, in fact, it was encouraged. Uh, you actually got more money. And, and for example, in Farmville, I think it was, you, you'd go to a central location and go, hey, can you come back to my farm and harvest my plants or whatever? And I would get double the coins because someone else did it for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there was actually more, and it was free. It was free <laughs> for them to do. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, so no place like home. Now we're on to number three. My mm-hmm. number three entry was Seven Days to Die. Um, a game that is taking forever to develop. It's been in development for, what, six, seven years now, and it's still considered alpha, at least to the developers. It's certainly playable. Um, you can get a lot of playtime out of this. That being said, um, I've spent so much time in this game. Um, I love, you know, the character growth. Um, I love the RPG system where you're earning skill points and assigning you're, you're, to skill points to like four different trees there's like strength and agility intelligence and so on and then you're unlocking new recipes for crafting um and every seven days by default a horde will come and try and tear down your base and destroy your base um you can set the server settings any which way you want though you can extend that make it easier harder um, make the zombies run or just walk whatever you want um, but this game, I, I love the survival elements and the exploration and the looting. Um, the Again, the combat and the, the stability of multiplayer can still be a bit janky. Um, but that being said, I've played this for several hours and I still come back to it regularly. Um, mm-hmm. I want more, though. I really want more. Uh, yeah. What did you think? What do you think of Seven Days? We play it. We play it recently. In fact, we've played it recently. Yeah. I love the game. I think it's a lot of fun. I like um, there. Any, I like the building stuff, and I like the mining. I just wish there was more to build. You know, I wish there were more things to build um, because there's so many. It's very Minecrafty in that sense, and I really want to like go crazy with my creativeness. You know, mm-hmm. and it, it's very limiting in that aspect sometimes. Um. The physics kind of stinks. Yeah, <laughs> they, they do. Yeah. Um, I love the questing. I think the trade quest is so much fun. And I love the vehicles in the game. It's perfect. It's great. Um, it's it's a game I definitely run out of gas with, though, sometimes, like, when I play a lot. Um, especially when you get to end game content. Yeah. So Not enough mm-hmm. to keep you busy. I'm at, we're at the point now in our playthrough where... Now we're just waiting every three days for more waves to hit. Like we we're we've done most of the like we're a level four, level five with the trader. Um, mm-hmm. Our characters are fairly leveled. Our base is surrounded by two layers of electric wire. Uh, we've got cement walls behind that. We've got a ditch uh, with blade traps and dart traps, and we've got a lot of different stuff going on. We've got shotgun yeah. turrets in our base. Like we're pretty much set for a while um this is the type of game where um now that i like because of the hours that i've spent in this game i like playing this game starting off on default settings i like playing it where zombies run it run at you at night and you have to scramble to find somewhere to hide you know even if you lose like you're sadistic it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun to have that challenging 
um, ness, I guess. <laughs> because after so many. Oh, did I just mute myself? No, you're fine. I can hear okay. you. Okay. <laughs> um, because after so many hours, and um, I guess I don't want to say that I'm a pro because I'm not, but now that you know what to expect after so many hours, I, I want to try like a higher difficulty right at the start, you know? Mm hmm. So <laughs> to get your to get your heart pumping a little bit more. Yeah, cuz I mean, after having so many hours, it's like, okay, I know what's going to happen. Um I'm going to get burnt out real quick, you know, faster and faster. Uh so, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Understandable. Uh mm -hmm. what was your number 3? Star Wars Battlefront 2. All right, interesting. Um this would have been on my list had it not been for the fact that the mode that we play regularly, uh, I think 95 to 99% of our hours spent in this game is the co-op mode against the bots, the four-player co-op. But that being said, we all we are only seeing 25% of the content in the game, which is sad. Yeah. Um, some of the other stuff, like the ship battles, that is all strictly multiplayer, and that is stupid. Yeah. This did not make my list on principle. Mm -hmm. because of some of that now is the gameplay good yeah i enjoy it i i enjoy being anakin or darth vader luke skywalker and wielding a lightsaber and and you know killing whoever that's fun um the ai is a bit rough uh to the uninitiated um like i feel like it's always a 4v against an entire team i feel like our ai bots don't do anything sometimes mm -hmm. um but despite its faults it's a it's a fun game, but like I said, it's not on my list out of principle because yeah. of how, you know, it is crafted. I, mm -hmm. What do you think? What, what, what did, why did this I, make your list? I agree with you. You know, if you don't want it on your list because of its, uh, you know, because of principle, that's totally fine. I, I have this on my list regardless of the multiplayer modes because I find this to be a very um, mindless, casual shoot 'em up kind of like Aliens Fire Team Elite. Yep. And I could play this all day while listening to music, just shooting things and leveling up. And the leveling up is insane. It's going to be impossible because max level is like, what, a thousand for each character or something? Well, you don't have to. You have <laughs> Every character has cards that they can level yeah. up. Once you hit level 25, I think, you can four-star or four-bar your, your card uh, yeah. with points. So, like, you technically only need to reach 25, 30, something like that to that be able to... <laughs> well, <laughs> I you. need max level. <laughs> it doesn't do anything for you except to say that you did it. But, in, yeah, for you yeah. non-completionists out there, <laughs> level 25, 30, you can, you can upgrade every card you have up to its max. Mm -hmm. And then you pick three of them uh, yeah. for each character slash ship. The the sh the the other modes are really fun. I've I've played in the, some of the PvP modes, and they are fun. Um, if you don't have uh, people that play nothing but PvP and like knock you in the face right as soon as you load in. Yeah, it's so like, it's like those <laughs> Call of Duty uh, yeah. hardcore people that. They can sh they can kill you from across the map with a pistol mm -hmm. somehow while jumping yes. and moving at the same time like insane, insane. <laughs> it's no fun. Yeah, no fun. I mean, I I liked the starship modes, but again, um, even though it's fun, you know, I don't mind playing the co-op stuff. I I think that's just as fun to be honest. The co-op is the the most fun part of the game. It's just a shame that again the content is only 25% of the actual game. Uh, this, yeah. the, the campaign, I will say, is also very good. The story was very well done. Compared mm -hmm. to uh, Rogue's, the, what, the, the Star Wars Squadrons, compared to that, yes. the story in this is fantastic. This Star Wars Squadrons has nothing on this. I am dying to like tell the story to everyone because it really is fantastic. And they really pulled on your heartstrings. 
Oh my gosh. The whole I story just, of Iden Versio oh, and all yes. that stuff. Yeah. Oh, and I can't even say anything else because it's just spoilers <laughs> and I just want to say like things that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Lily, Nick, hurry up and finish the campaign. <laughs> Did they even start playing it? I don't know. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> anyway. So yeah. Wait, did you finish it? I finished it, but I they also added more levels post that I don't think I've played. <gasps> like I, th- the last level I remember playing was uh, they they added a bonus Kylo Ren level, but I do recall them adding more campaign levels after that at some point. I just I I, I, haven't, I have not played those. Oh. Oh man, I'm gonna cry. I okay. will get to it at some point. Okay. okay. And Queen okay. and Queen. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Um, next. next. Um, it's actually the same. Same game. Wow. Okay. Uh, we ain't going home until we all rock and stone. So um, uh-huh. we've got Deep Rock Galactic as our number two. Um, we just played this tonight. In fact, um, mm-hmm. this is what Left 4 Dead and other games like it need to be in terms of progression. Um, yes. Not only do you go around levels and shoot stuff, but you're mining stuff. And then you take those resources back home and then you can upgrade your four different classes in various different ways. You've got an engineer class, my personal favorite. You can put down turrets, uh, platforms to help your people out in places where they can't reach certain things you've got a gunner that can put down um what are they called uh lines the gunner zip lines zip lines thank you um (laughs) zip lines those are really cool but the gunner is also very heavy in terms of like they've got a heavy gatling gun the uh digger or the driller rather has a drill Mm -hmm. gun that can easily drill through stuff and and make passageways where typically you can't um, and they've got a flamethrower too. And then you've got the scout, which is probably your favorite, has a, has a grappling hook, which can zip all over the place, reach hard to get resources, um, paired with the engineer's, uh, platform gun, which you're always pinging stuff for me to, to platform. So you can go up high and get stuff. So it's, it's yeah. a really cool game this way. You level up these, uh, classes. Um, you can even prestige them just for fluff if you want. Um, yeah. but typically you're, you're using your resources to upgrade your weapons and your tools and even unlock skins for yourself so you can wear cool cool things. Um, again, this is like this is like a Left 4 Dead Black Back for Blood times five. Like I, there's so much more to this game. And just the just the mannerisms that the dwarves have, um, what they say and how they interact and every like I die inside every time I have to kill a loot bug <laughs> or something, you know, just just offhanded comments that are really funny. Um, it, the developers put a lot of love and TLC into this game and it they shows. Do. It sh- really shows. Um, what do you think since this is your entry too? Oh my gosh, I love this game. I've been playing this for so much, for so long. Um, and lately it's just like I've been trying to get the new, um, I guess, the scripts for um, the rival incursion seasonal challenges that they mm-hmm. have. Yeah, they just introduced a new seasonal uh, mechanic where it lasts for like five months or something like that. And mm-hmm. you earn scrip, which is like a, a premium currency of sorts. And then you spend the script to unlock more aesthetic stuff for that mm-hmm. season. Um, and then I'm guessing it resets at some point and you unlock, you know, you, your tree starts over, but it's purely aesthetic. It's not a pay to win system. No, mm-hmm. no, no. It's hundred percent free. Everything that you get in this game can be atta- obtainable for free. There are some purchasable packs that you can buy to support the developers, but, uh, it's not necessary. It doesn't make your character overpowered in any way. Yeah. And the weapons, um, that you upgrade, they cost, um, like minerals too sometimes that you get from the maps though the prizes um from the rival seasonal challenges are not only aesthetics but they're also of those minerals sometimes Mm -hmm. so that i think is pretty cool it gives you a chance to upgrade your weaponry Mm -hmm. um it's a cute game um the only thing is sometimes the fov is like really close so i have to constantly switch um back and forth from like um you you have honest. you have an unhealthy obsession with a with a fisheye lens thing where you can see behind you 
I, yeah. I can't, I get dizzy. I can't do that. Um, I can't always do that, though. I really can't. Because when something that looks like a million miles away from me hits me, I'm like, okay, why is it so far away, but it can hit me as if I'm up in its face? <laughs> you need one of those oh. <laughs> objects may appear closer than what yeah. they actually are stickers, you know, on exactly. your monitor. Um, <laughs> like they have on the rearview mirrors of cars. Anyway, mm -hmm. so that's why I have to switch it when enemies come up. I have to put it back in the middle But when there's no enemies, I put it all the way like to max so that I can see everything around me <laughs> mm -hmm. That's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. the only thing only complaint I have is that sometimes The RNG in terms of map generation is just ugh. some mm -hmm. maps are great where everything's nice and flat and then you've got maps where <laughs> your mission critical object is up here. You're, you have to connect a pipe all the way down here, and the pipe doesn't go straight down. You've got to loop it around. You've got to get platforms so that the thing can stand. It's just, oh my god. So, it's The RNG is ridiculously terrible sometimes, and, and yeah. very frustrating, the map generation. Uh, you can do you imagine doing that on a Hazard 5? That's rough. <laughs> Hazard 5 is like difficulty 5. There's like 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. So uh, we typically play on Hazard 2. Mm -hmm. uh, I do, anyway. She plays probably on 3 or 4, if I had to guess. 3. 3. three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. She's, but, she's more hardcore than I am. No, 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 no. I just like the additional resources it gets. If I'm not hurting for resources or anything like that, mm -hmm. I will actually play on Hazard 1, you know, just for a casual Noob. gameplay. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> So, um, what else can we say about this that hasn't been said? I mean, like, we've we've kind of killed this game to death lately because we have covered it, played it, reviewed it, all that stuff. But oh my goodness. this game, I, I, I can't recommend it enough, folks. Uh, if you like Left 4 Dead, but you want, you want more, you want to upgrade stuff, you want to try out different classes, you want to play with your friends, you want to uh, prestige your classes, you want to um, uh, unlock cool skins... Now with the whole seasonal thing, uh, complete daily challenges so that you can get the script, which is, again, the premium currency. Uh, the missions are varied, too. Sometimes you'll be escorting a drill dozer, uh, which is more linear. Uh, other times you'll have to be connecting pipes to a driller, and so that you have to... They're liquid morkite or whatever, and, and you're, there's drills scattered, drill sites scattered throughout the level, and you have to connect pipes to these drills from a central point. Um, other times you're just tasked with killing dreadnoughts or mm. uh, mining more kites or whatever. Uh, so there's, the missions are varied. There's tons of different um, biomes. Biomes, and, uh huh. And there's modifications to that to those biomes too. Sometimes the They're ghost is the worst. Yeah, it is. They're randomly generated and they renew like every I think it's twenty minutes or so. Mm -hmm. So. It's it's fantastic and it keeps things exciting and varied. And if you you start getting boring, uh, bored or not boring, mm -hmm. bored, bored, <laughs> you can just up the difficulty by one hazard and see if it's you know to your liking. Mm -hmm. So I think it's pretty fun. Agreed. I really enjoyed this game. Um, I mm -hmm. highly recommend it to anybody. Mm -hmm. All right, moving this along, um, we are at our number one entry. Um, mm -hmm. goes to no surprise that my entry is Phasmophobia. Mm -hmm. Out of all of the ghost games that I've played, this one's the best. Um, it's Sure, it started off a little janky, um, but it's come along uh, as slowly as, as the development is for this game. Um, they've added more levels to it. There's a nightmare mode now. They've added new equipment. Um, they plan to add even more. Huh? Over Deep Rock? What's that? That took precedence over Deep Rock? Yeah, I enjoy Phasma. I really enjoy this game. Phasma, a ghost... Like, this is a game I, I love to play with friends because there's an investigation element to it. There's a uh, a sense of urgency to get things done before the ghost tries to kill you kind of thing. I don't know. Out of all the games I've played, I've played this one the most. If I, if I had to put a time limit on every game I've ever played this year... I think with with my friends, you and, and Nick and Lily and other people, I think Phasmophobia tops that list. Um, so, I yeah, even even though I have still some reservations and complaints about it, um, I think it's it's a you could you could easily lose fifty plus hours in this, just either solo yeah. or with friends. It's better with friends. Yeah, um, definitely. What do you think of Phasmophobia? 
I like phasmophobia. At first, I was pretty um, not too keen on it, and I, ugh, <laughs> I wasn't really into due to, it. Due to personal uh, issues. Yeah. But after, like, you know, you wearing me down on it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kidding. my fault. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The, the, the first few times of you playing were a joy. Was like it? yeah cuz well all right you were in a room i was in a room the ghost showed up you screamed <laughs> bloody murder at it snapped a picture and then uh screamed again <laughs> it was just the funniest thing ever you know what i mean like you were ah run up to yeah. it click run away ah it was it was hilarious <laughs> like some of those moments no. were, were now like we played so much though that like now I scream not because I'm so much as scared of the ghost, but I'm scared. Like I get startled. It's more out of startled. It's a jump startling. scare kind of thing. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of unfortunate because I do wish that they added um, a little bit. Um, I want to it. I want to see slime coming down the walls. Mm -hmm. I want to see plates being thrown at you. Yeah, the I, doors like flapping in the wind. I want to see furniture breaking or lights exploding. Um, Ghost Hunters Corp has some of that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So other games are doing it. Why can't Phasmophobia do it? Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping they do it at some point. But um, it's still, I think out of all the out of all of the ghost games on the market, this one is the most stable and the most mm -hmm. enjoyable to play. I, I agree with this. The only reason why it's not on here is just because I haven't been playing it as much mm -hmm. um, as as the other games, you know. Um, I do like um, the new updates that they have been doing, like with the ghost sounds and the, um, the flickering of the lights and the equipment going crazy and looking different. I do not like, however, I can't stand it. That just because the ghost appears, that it acts as if it's hunting. I can't stand that at all. Yeah, meaning that you can't tell if it's hunting or if it's just appeared. So yeah. typically, I mean, like on nightmare mode, it blocks places to hide. So you better run as soon as it shows up. Otherwise, you're dead. And mm -hmm. even then, you're not guaranteed to live. But yeah. when you need to like, like the appear animation is the same as the hunting animation. Um, the equipment goes nuts and all that stuff. So you don't know. So it's the benefit of the doubt, you better run. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and you lose the opportunity to take a picture of it or whatever. So I think that needs to be addressed in some way. Definitely. Yeah. And I also don't like that the third evidence in nightmare mode is, is missing hidden? because I mean, it would be great if all the ghosts had significant differences that we can actually see, you know, or like really know mm -hmm. but we don't know and it's very difficult i mean they said they were going to work on it yeah it's on the um, trello board it's on their list of things to work on I, I saw that they are planning to update the hard to identify ghosts mm -hmm. for a nightmare mode so there are they are planning to work on it to what degree i couldn't tell you but it is yeah. on their trello board mm -hmm. so all right and last but not least your number one was what New world. New world. I'm s <laughs> again. I I have over a hundred hours in this game now, and mm -hmm. I'm level forty nine out of sixty. Um, mm -hmm. I like the game because there are no classes. You sort of just build the character you want to build. Mm -hmm. um, resources are typically plentiful. That being said, it feels like a Korean MMO in the sense that it's super grindy. Mm -hmm crafting wise um it's just it feels like some of the things in this game take forever to do Ch yeah. you need you need to chop down a forest the size of texas just to level up your logging enough to craft one furniture piece of furniture you know what i mean like some mm -hmm. stuff in this game uh there's no mounts so there's no way to, to move around the map faster like in world of warcraft there was uh, horses and tigers that you can ride on the ground um, griffins that you can fly in the air. This game, there's nothing like that. Um, were there fast travel points in World of Warcraft? Yes, there was. Fast travel. There were. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, fast travel. Um, it wasn't instantaneous. You got on a griffin and you flew to your next destination for a cost mm -hmm. of money. But still, like, um, uh, the, the game itself, though, isn't bad. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it was developed more for PvP than PvE. 
And yes. I think at the nearing the end of this journey, I'm going to be disappointed with what I actually have to access to or the ability to do. I feel like this is going to be like, it's going to force me into PVP if I want to stay interested, which I'm not really keen on. Um, so wh why was this on your number one? I'm just curious. I like this game because I love the graphics. That's a huge thing. Um, Even though it can melt your video card. But go ahead. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's not... Well, yeah, I'm just saying okay. that's a failure on Amazon's part. <laughs> um, is, the that's... the blunders that Amazon has done to this, like, again, allowing allowing code to be entered in the chat box so that if people mm -hmm. hover their mouse over the text, it will disconnect them from the game. Allowing that kind of code into the game's in-game text chat. Yeah. That is rookie uh, rookies uh, no what are you doing amazon like there th yeah there are a lot of flaws in this game there really are the reason why it's on my number one though is because i haven't really come across any of those flaws yet mm -hmm. you know so until like until i personally get those flaws it's um you know it's my number one right now right um and like you said, I have a feeling that as I near the end of the game, like once they get to 60 and complete all my missions and stuff, um, which is hopefully going to take a while because this game is a walking simulator practically. Oh, it is. You're um, walking everywhere. Yeah. But until I get there, I, I'm probably going to have to do PvP in order to keep my interest. But at the same time... I want to get to. I want to get to max everything. I want to have max weapon proficiency. I want to get to ma max levels, two hundred with all my skills. I want to get to max thirty in every single territory, like mm -hmm. with territory standing, and that's gonna take forever. So, you know, I think I still have a long way to go, and I think that when I do finally get to PvP, I will hopefully be good enough to be decent at it. I think I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. you know so this is a game i could see you playing pvp me not so much i would yeah. i would be in it for the business aspect like there are no merchants in this game npc merchants everything is done via auction house so that will our economy right now is screwed up like mm -hmm. the, yeah. the tier three tier four stuff that you can craft sell for next to nothing on the auction house Whereas the tier one stuff is very sought after because you need tier one to craft tier two and you need tier two mm. to craft tier three. So you need a bunch of tier one crap in order to level your crafting. So everyone yeah. needs it. So it's like you can make money just by grinding out tier one. So why am I bother making this tier four stuff to level my crafting profession when I can't sell it or use it? Um, yeah. It's just... it. It's backwards, this game. There should be an NPC vendor I can sell things to, even if it's at a terrible price. Mm -hmm. At least I can get something for it. Yes, you yeah. can dismantle most of your stuff, but let's say you make 5,000 arrows to level up uh, your, your engineering. You can't, you can't dismantle them for materials and money. You're stuck with them unless you throw them away. So mm -hmm. it's like, well... What do I do with this stuff? You know what I mean? So I, there's this game, like you said, has flaws. So it did okay. not make my list because of that, even though I have over 100 hours in it. Um, and I will keep playing it. But I still think that it's still uh, adolescent in age. Like, I think it, it has a lot of more room to grow. I hope that they fix the market. I'm very concerned that... Um... I'm I'm honestly really concerned about how it's going to end up being like the longer um the more people play it I guess and the longer the older the game gets. So like what if you have so many people playing it and the market is just going to be even more screwed up because no one's going to need I don't know like any of the tier 1 stuff or something. I have a feeling that numbers are going to go down. I mean, it, as is typical of an MMO, it starts off strong and then numbers start to dwindle until mm -hmm. new content is released. So if anything, there's going to be less people playing it in the next year or so, yeah. um, which means less people are going to need to buy stuff, which means, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I am, like you said, I am worried about the direction the economy is going to go in. Yeah, you have to pay taxes on your housing and uh, oh, no. that's stupid. I, I wish it was more PvE based, but I understand that they, you know, 
they made this game for PvP ma- mainly. Mm-hmm. I just hope that they think about us PvE players too. So we'll see. Um, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna hold my breath, but I do have high hopes for it. I'll just yeah. say that. I mean, in the meantime, at least I can still continue to build out hours in this. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still think it's worth the purchase because you you again hundred plus hours easy. Um, but it's not going to be a World of Warcraft killer by any means or Final Fantasy for that. You know, uh, my brother raves and rants about Final Fantasy. Um, and I hear it's pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. I couldn't get into it because I really don't care about the Final Fantasy universe. Like, I have no connection with the lore at all. Um, yeah, that's how I am with World of Warcraft. Like, I can't get into it. Really? <laughs> yeah. See, I, I enjoyed World of Warcraft because of the characters and the different classes and stuff. This game, again, has no class. You just, whatever weapon you want to equip at that point in time, you equip it, and then you gain the skills associated with that weapon type. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, but now, yeah. if if they got, like, a StarCraft MMO going, it, uh, Blizzard, <laughs> let's go. Let's interesting. How would that work? <laughs> I have no idea, but I want it. I want to buy it. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. Like, a, it would be like a... I don't know if you're the Terrans and then the other faction is the, the, the Zerg. And then it's like a, you've got optional PVP, but it's mm-hmm. mainly PVE. It's sort of like World of Warcraft, but with uh Stark. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. All I right. I'm on board. I'm on board with this. <laughs> yes. Okay. Petition. Two people. Two people. <laughs> Let's take it to the dot org or whatever it is. So we could get a petition signed. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's good here. Um, anything else to say about this before we sign off? No, your list was awesome and surprising. Oh, yours was awesome too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With the exception of the Banner Saga 2, I, I um, oh. enjoyed the other games. I mean, I haven't played the Banner Saga 2 at all, mm-hmm. uh, if I remember. it's not even. I don't even have a video for it, so I, I don't think I've ever played it, to be honest with wow. you. Wow. You should play it. I, I think will. Like it. Ant Queen, yeah. Um, I'll get yeah. to all right, and Queen, folks, that is the running joke. Um, ba- way back when on my YouTube channel, I had a, a video series called Ant Queen. Mm-hmm. On a regular basis, I would get comments, more Ant Queen, more Ant Queen, more Ant Queen, more Ant Queen. And it just became a joke, a running joke at home. Every time I'm yeah. asked to do something and I'm overwhelmed with 10 other things, I go, Ant Queen, Ant Queen, just to make fun of the fact that I'm too busy to play it right now. That's what that joke is. Anyway, fun fact. Um, So there you go, folks. The DGA 2021 uh, Video Game Awards. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince and Ida Lee. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you guys next time. Take care. Bye, guys.